BQ has sent me their B1 printer for me to test out. During this video I'll give you some assembly pointers, also I'll be testing out several types of filaments to evaluate the print quality, tell you the pros and cons of the printer, and more importantly let you know if you should spend your hard earned money on buying a B1 printer. So let's start off by unboxing. The printer comes partially assembled right out of the box, with the majority of wiring already done. I found the instructions simple and easy to follow, so I won't go into too much detail about the assembly process. However I will mention a few useful tips along the way to avoid some potential pitfalls. These screws were left loose until the frame is completely assembled. The wiring loom for the extruder and X axis is clearly labelled so there is no need to get out your wire strippers here since everything is simply plug and play. With the frame fully assembled I used a square to align the Z-axis rails perpendicular to the bed and tightened the screws. The hot end is connected via a USB-C cable, however it should be noted the instructions state this USB-C cable is customised and can't be swapped out for a regular USB-C cable. Now I had to fit the Z-axis limit switch stop, however due to myself misreading the instructions I assembled the frame with the hole on the wrong side. Being the responsible adult that I am, I refused to disassemble the printer and instead opted to drill and tap a new hole. Before we power on the printer, I recommend checking the Y and Z axis rails are parallel to one another. Use a pair of calipers or a ruler to measure each end of the rails and make sure they're parallel to one another. Ideally you should have less than 0.5mm difference between each measurement. If the rails aren't perfectly parallel, back off some of the screws holding the rails and realign everything before retightening the screws and then measure again. The last thing to do is adjust the eccentric spaces located behind the V-wheels. To check the tension of the wheels, using your fingers try to make the wheel slip on the rail. If the wheel is difficult to slip, then there is too much pressure on the wheel. If on the other hand the wheel slips on the rail freely without any real effort, then the wheel is too loose. 
To adjust the wheel, turn the eccentric spacer using a 10mm spanner. Ideally you should be able to make the wheel slip on the rail with minimal effort. And make sure you repeat this process for every set of wheels. Let's pop off the cover and take a quick look at the stepper control board, PSU and wiring. The IEC socket has a replaceable fuse which is a great feature to see. All the wiring looks to be done to a good standard, although I did find the chassis ground connection was left loose. This is quite concerning considering how essential a proper ground connection is. Ideally the ground connection should also have a toothed washer as well. Before we do our first print, the bed must be levelled using the adjustment wheels located under the bed. First power on the printer and go through the menu to find the bed levelling function. Using a sheet of standard A4 paper, the gap is checked between the nozzle and bed to the point the nozzle is barely grabbing the paper. Repeat this step for all four corners and the middle of the bed. I recommend doing the entire procedure at least twice as adjusting one corner often upsets all the other corners that you've already made adjustments to. So do go through this entire procedure at least twice. Now we can move on to setting up the printer in Cura. Click on settings, then add a printer. Select add a non-networked printer and scroll down to BQ. And select the BQ B1. All the settings for the printer are automatically loaded, so you can click on next. For my first print, I'll print the tried and tested 3D Benchy boat. After tuning the print settings, the model is sliced and saved to a micro SD card. For my first print, I'll be using PLA e-silk filament. Later, I'll be testing out several other types of filaments. The magnetic print base made it super easy to remove parts from the build plate. The print turned out okay, but it did have quite a bit of stringing, with some retracting tuning this would likely be reduced. Next I tried printing with PETG, however towards the end of the print the model broke free from the bed. This can be caused by a number of factors. However, in my case, the PETG didn't adhere to the print bed. To solve this, I went to my tried and tested method of spraying a thin coat of hairspray onto the bed to promote adhesion. This time, the print was successful. For comparison, I have printed in several different types of plastic, so let's take a closer look at how each plastic performed with the B1. 
Up first is regular PLA. The print quality was good with a small amount of stringing. Next is PLA Plus which printed really well with almost no stringing at all and a high level of detail was retained in the model. This is PLA eSilk and it didn't print very well. Compared to regular PLA the eSilk print had a lot of stringing and the print wasn't the best quality with small voids around the cabin walls. Up next is PETG which turned out quite nice. There is a fair bit of stringing however this is to be expected when printing with PETG and it's not a flaw of the printer itself. And lastly is ABS Plus. In typical ABS fashion the print warped and pulled away from the bed. However this isn't the printer's fault, rather it's mine. I'm still experimenting with different products to promote bed adhesion with ABS Plus. Warping aside the print quality was the best so far with absolutely no stringing while retaining every tiny detail in the print. To promote bed adhesion with ABS Plus, a popular option is to use a 50-50 solution of PVA glue and water. I brushed on two layers of the solution and allowed it to dry before printing. Once the bed cools down, the part easily releases from the bed. There was a small amount of warping on the first couple of layers, however the part stayed adhered to the print bed and overall the quality was quite good. Now I have spent plenty of time printing various parts with the B1, so what are my thoughts? Well first let's cover what I dislike. The angle the filament feeds into the runout sensor is quite steep and as a result there are shavings of filament left around the sensor so I'd recommend fitting a better spool holder. The Bowden tube setup means printing flexible filaments such as TPU is out of the question. Also for prints with lots of tiny retractions close together, Bowden tube setups can leave behind voids in your parts as can be seen on this model of the Star Trek Discovery. On the flip side Bowden setups typically have less ringing in the print so there's pros and cons either way. For myself I prefer a lightweight direct drive setup. There is only one Z-axis stepper motor. Although this hasn't been an issue for me, hypothetically if you modified the printer by adding let's say a heavy direct drive hot end, this might cause the x-axis rail to bend slightly during printing. The lack of cable drag chains isn't surprising at this price point, however keep in mind it's very easy for things like the extruder cable to get snagged which would cause all sorts of issues. Alright now on to the good points. The stepper board and drivers operate the motors incredibly quiet. The noisiest thing on the printer are the fans. Even with the microphone next to the motor it can hardly be heard over the fans. The magnetic print base makes removing parts so easy. The print volume is great with plenty of height to print things like a tall vase. The touchscreen interface is simply fantastic and the menu system is very intuitive to use.
and you also have the option to swap to the Marlin interface if that's more your thing. And having the option to easily add a BL touch sensor for auto bed leveling is a great feature to see. So would I recommend you go out and buy a B1 printer? Well yes I would, I think it offers a fantastic value for money option. However at this price point there are always going to be a couple of drawbacks. Fortunately in the B1's case these can be relatively easily fixed. Number one is I'd highly recommend fitting a BL touch sensor to it. This would enable you to use auto bed mesh leveling and believe me once you've used it there's no going back. The first layer is perfect every time. The other thing I would do is fit cable drag chains as having the cables just flapping in the breeze here is from my experience a disaster waiting to happen. Eventually either the cables break through bending in the same place every time or they get snagged in one of the axes, either a stepper motor, a belt and so on. With those two things renamed though I think this would be a really capable printer and a reliable printer at that. Speaking for myself I'm considering doing a few more modifications to my B1. Uh, I'm twinkering around with the idea of fitting a second Z-axis stepper motor and lead screw, so we've got one each side of the X-axis, and also maybe fitting a E3D Hymera hot end. Uh, that's a direct drive hot end and looks really good on paper, so I'm looking forward to giving that a go. So hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that video when it comes out. Also if you found the video useful please give it a like, it would be much appreciated. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support despite the global pandemic that's going on. It really shows you care a lot about the content I make. Thank you guys. So I will see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.